Again, Obwase has become the epicenter with over 250 cases. And yesterday we talked about, um, you know, a facility that was going to be converted into an isolation center and how residents in that particular community did not agree to it. I'm sure that there are some updates on that as well. And so we're crossing over to the Ashanti region where Evans Inkum is on standby. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Bella. I am doing very well. And you? I'm fine, thank you very much. And so, let's carry on with the conversation. I don't know if we have any increase in the numbers uh, in the Ashanti region, but of course you will give us all those details. So tell us. Well, so it is becoming more like a nightmare in Obwasi, especially when you hear the uh, chairperson of the District Security Council for Obwasi East, Francisca, um, calling for a curfew mm. just to manage the number the growing number of numbers as far as COVID-19 is concerned then you have every cause to worry because now you understand the magnitude of the problem that they have at hand at the moment mm. only yesterday we were told that case counts in Obwase or the number of cases have increased mm -hmm. uh, by 100 so uh, we are talking about 361 at wow. the moment. If there is no further, if there is no further increment, then we should be talking about 361 cases overnight. In Obwase at the moment, overnight, at the moment, uh, it's it, it's quite worrying. I mean, when you hear uh, some residents uh, talk about um, the development and how they are also. I mean, the level of apprehension that they have, as far as that particular enclave is concerned, mm. um, it's quite worrying. But what is the good news is that, you know, yesterday we reported that there has been some fierce resistance mm -hmm. against a proposed private facility which was going to be converted into an isolation center. Now, the um, DICEC and the COVID team in Obwase have stood on their ground and they are still using that particular facility. Yesterday, a good number of uh, cases were transported to that, that particular facility, mm. and it is under heavy security, Bella. Was there any form of resistance, even when they were transporting? Um, did, was there heavy security as a result and all of that? Because we're hearing that there was a point where residents may have blocked some parts of the road, uh, preventing them from transporting uh, the patients. Give us more updates on that. Be, be, beyond that, they even locked up the place, but the police broke into that particular They, they locked facility. up the isolation they up center? The exactly. They locked up the place, so the police broke into it. Um, I understand uh, this particular um, action was done overnight. Uh, I'm talking about the, the, the transportation of mm -hmm. these uh, COVID-19 cases. Um, it was done overnight. Um, so um, there wasn't any much resistance. Because it was done at the time the uh, residents were asleep. Uh, but in order to ensure some level of sustainability, um, they still have men there who are watching okay. uh, or, or who are patrolling the area just to ensure that there wouldn't be any, I mean, ugly, I mean, confrontation as far as the residents and then the people there who have been isolated are concerned. But we're also hearing, I mean, the residents are complaining that um, the water that they use, mm. they don't like it because it, it passes through the area and all of that. I mean, um, the stigma is just very ugly. And, Wait, break uh, it down for it, us. They don't want down. to use the water in the community anymore. One, one, resident, one resident was saying that after the, 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 they have taken their bath, the water flows through um, his, his, his house. And he doesn't want that because he, mm. for him, that thing alone can make him susceptible to contracting the disease. And so he's worried about that. But I think uh, it's some, it's, uh, they, they need so much education. I mean, as far as uh, the COVID-19 is concerned, for them to really understand. Or, I mean, this whole thing has to be demystified to them so they Absolutely. have a better understanding. Have of, there been any uh, arrests, by the way, of, um, of people who uh, locked up the isolation center and tried to block the police from doing their work? So far, I mean, as far as I know, um, when they were transporting them, there wasn't any resistance. So okay. There wasn't any blockade in the first right. place. So that one, that, one, that one was off the picture. Okay. But, I also know that it has taken the police or DICEC 
some level of one would say strategic persuas persuasion mm. just for these residents or agreed residents to understand them and then allow them to operate. But I think we, 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 the, the day is still young. Um, maybe midday we should know if there's going to be any a renewed resistance yeah. as far as that particular place is concerned. Absolutely. And I know you'll keep us uh, priced. And so thank you so much, Evans Inkum. And he's reporting from the Ashanti region on the resistance by some residents in Obwasi um, as an isolation center um, has been, of course, put up to house some of these patients. And he says that the numbers have increased overnight. And so yesterday we were reporting 261 cases in Obwasi. As it stands now, they've recorded 100 cases, and so they stand at 361. And the entire Ashanti region, uh, as said yesterday, had reported 355 cases. And so if we're supposed to add the extra 100 from Obwase, then that makes it 455. Does it stay this way, or are we going to still record more numbers by 9 a.m.? We'll find out from the Ministry of Information. This is TV3 New Day.